Hello everybody, it's Lotus Moon. I can't believe I'm already past 600 subscribers. I have something special planned, so don't worry, it's definitely coming. And I want to thank everyone for all the support. Today's reading is another reading from Evictus, and I guess it's a normal kind of reading. Well, normal in the sense that it happens pretty much almost in everyday life. I'm an only child, so I never had to experience this. But I can only imagine how siblings must feel when they come across their younger or older siblings' most precious diaries and can't resist the temptation to read it. Or, well, anything that may hold their siblings' deepest, darkest secrets. But that's something that happens to Rarity and Sweetie Belle. This reading is called Ruining Her Life. I hope you enjoy it. Ruining Her Life, written by Evictus. The end of her privacy. Rarity was counting the money she had made as she had just gotten home from a fashion display. She needed to know how much she made that day while she was counting her money, she thought about what Sweetie Belle might have done that day as she didn't know. While she was doing that, she looked at Sweetie Belle's room. She stood up and walked into the room as she was curious about what was in there. She knew it was wrong to look into people's stuff that they wanted to keep private, but she just couldn't help herself. When she got inside, she looked around at Sweetie Belle's room to see her dresses and the Kitty Mark Crusader stuff. And soon, she came upon Sweetie Belle's diary. Her eyes lit up in curiosity as she was shocked that she had found Sweetie Belle's diary. She debated with herself if she should invade Sweetie Belle's privacy by looking at her diary as it was tempting her to read it. But on the other hand, she knew it was wrong. She was faced with a decision. She knew that if she had, did read her sister's diary, she would have to make sure to put it back where it was and cover up the hints that would give away the fact that she had read it. She became nervous as she hoped that Sweetie Belle wouldn't barge in on her. She sat down and couldn't resist the temptation as she opened her sister's diary and read it. She came upon so much private information that anybody could use to blackmail her sister if they got their hands on the diary. She found out from the diary that Sweetie Belle was bisexual and had aquaphobia. There were tons of other private information that Sweetie Belle had in the diary. Rarity snickered as Sweetie Belle gushed over several males and females in the diary. She couldn't believe that she had found Sweetie Belle's diary. Rarity started to tell people what she found out. She soon finished sending the messages and then she heard the door open and that it was Sweetie Belle. Rarity cursed at herself quietly and closed the drawer and then hit the diary. She shook from the fright as she started to rip stuff out of her dressers and drawers and her closet to try to find her diary. She was truly scared. Rarity snickered at her sister silently. She felt that it was the most evilest thing she had done. She quickly got out from her hiding place and walked into Sweetie Belle's room and held up the diary. Looking for this? Rarity asked her. Sweetie Belle gasped in shock and immediately tried to grab it, but Rarity moved it out of her reach, which upset Sweetie Belle. Come on, Rarity! Give it to me! That's mine! I have personal stuff in there that I have a right to keep private! Please, Rarity! Sweetie Belle said. Rarity raised an eyebrow. Oh, really now? And since when did you have a diary? Plus... You have some juicy stuff in here, too, Rarity snickered. Sweetie Belle's frustration and upset attitude grew 
as she couldn't get her diary. Please, sis, I need that. Why are you doing this to me? Sweetie Belle cried. Rarity laughed for a few moments as she couldn't help herself. When she heard that, she really had the upper hand. You know, if I made a couple of phone calls about this diary, I could get your reputa reputation ruined in a matter of minutes. I could call a few people, and then people will be calling here. But I can't do that, Rarity said as she handed Sweetie Belle's diary back to her. Oh, aren't you? If you weren't going to do that, then why did you threaten me with that anyway? Sweetie Belle asked. Rarity smirked. Because I already did it, Rarity stated as she showed Sweetie Belle the text messages on her phone. Sweetie Belle started to hyperventilate. Rarity laughed at herself and threw the book to Sweetie Belle and then walked away. Sweetie Belle sat down and as she started breathing heavily, she started to shake. She had no idea what she was going to do. Her privacy was compromised. Sweetie Belle got up and ran out of the house sobbing heavily. She saw that the people were sending her messages and asking her why she had aquaphobia and making fun of her being bisexual. She was mortified. She had no idea why her sister ruined her life. What did she do to Rarity that made her do this cruel thing to her? She sat somewhere private and sobbed hysterically. She could never live with her information out there. She just hoped that somebody would comfort her. She cried as she sat in the alleyway as time passed. She cried so much that her face was soaked with tears. She had been crying for a few minutes, and after an hour, she feared for her life. She decided that she could try to move away from what happened to her. Soon as she was crying, Twilight came up to her with a phone in her hand. Sweetie Belle was prepared for Twilight to mock her, but instead, Twilight hugged her, which shocked Sweetie Belle to no end. Sweetie Belle hugged her back. Sweetie Belle, I came here to tell you that we have confiscated Rarity's phone and that we have retrieved your diary. Celestia has a team working on taking down your information from the several websites that Rarity posted them on. Rarity is in a lot of trouble for what she did. She was not going to get away with that, Twilight told Sweetie Belle, and Sweetie Belle was grateful. Thanks so much, Twilight. I was so scared about what might happen to my friendships and my reputation, but now I'm glad that I don't have to worry about that anymore. Sweetie Belle stated. Twilight nodded her head. You're welcome. You're going to have to stay with your parents from now on. Rarity's element has also been taken away from her and will be given to someone else. She is going to be punished permanently. She can never recover from what she has done and she has been ordered not to go near you. Twilight told Sweetie Belle. Thank you. Thank you. You're a lifesaver. I was worried, Sweetie Belle said. Twilight waved that worry off and spoke. Well, don't worry. It's all over. Your parents have been notified, and they are coming here to take care of you so you can still play with your friends and continue to go to school, Twilight said. Sweetie Belle felt so relieved. Thank you. Why did Rarity do that to me, though? Sweetie Belle asked. She was angry at you, and she was angry at her parents neglecting her when she was younger. So she took it out on you, as you were cared for better by, her, by your parents. Don't worry, even if you will be living with them, you will still see your friends, Twilight said. We, Sweetie Belle and Twilight talked for a bit more, which relaxed Sweetie Belle. And then Sweetie Belle got picked up by her parents and brought back to their place so that she could live with them. Sweetie Belle got therapy that helped her after what happened to her. It took a year to get over, but she triumphed. She still saw her friends and went to school. Rarity was released from jail and was ordered to never have contact with Sweetie Belle. 
Twilight and her friends excommunicated Rarity from their group, and a new element bearer replaced Rarity, who continued to carry out the duties as the new bearer of the elements of generosity. In the end, everything turned out okay for Sweetie Belle, which is what she was glad about, even though something bad happened to her. She knew that in the end, good won like it always is supposed to win. And that was Ruining Her Life, written by Evictus. Every Pony, I don't know how you see this, but I see this as two things. The first thing being alternate universe revenge. Rarity leaked Sweetie Belle's private thoughts, just as Sweetie Belle leaked Rarity's private thoughts in the show. Under the alias of Gabby Gums, Sweetie Belle Apple Miss Goodaloo exposed Rarity's private diary to the full to the full free press. So this would be Rarity's alternate universe revenge, be it in a cruel way that I really don't condone. I mean, I know having an older sibling or a younger sibling and finding their diary and having the temptation to read it is strong, but honestly, I don't condone this, especially the way Rarity did it. The second thing I see this as is only child syndrome, in which Rarity, I see it in the reading, is simply lashing out at Sweetie Belle because growing up, Rarity's parents didn't care for her as much as they do for Sweetie Belle currently. So she's simply lashing out in anger against her. Now, the repercussions of her actions were, in a sense, well deserved. Rarity is the element of generosity, and there was no generosity here with what she did to her younger sister. So having her element taken away was to be expected. And being excommunicated, that's more or less kind of in a way what I see what happened to Sunset Shimmer after her actions in the first Equestria Girls movie. She wasn't excommunicated by anyone, but she was really more or less liked by her peers in the following movie. So, in a way, just desserts have been served, and, well, I guess in a way what goes around comes around? I don't know. <laughs> Sorry for rambling, every pony. I hope you enjoy this reading. I am Lotus Moon, and I want to wish you all a good morning, afternoon, evening, or night, wherever you are, every pony. Good night.